And during Biden's speech, he spent plenty of time pandering to the LGBTQ plus crowd, but he somehow made zero mention of the 13 service members killed during his disastrous Afghanistan withdrawal. And one congresswoman was getting infuriated, and rightly so, uh, but getting called out now for standing out to call him out. Our troops in Iraq have faced, in Afghanistan, have faced many dangers. One being stationed at bases, breathing in toxic smoke. When they come home, many of the world's fittest and best trained warriors in the world, never the same. Headaches, numbness, dizziness, a cancer that would put them in a flag draped coffin. I know. That woman, Colorado Congresswoman Lauren Boebert, joins me now. Congresswoman, you got an enormous amount of heat. You were smeared in the media for breach of decorum. Uh, why did you speak out during this speech as you did? Laura, it is never wrong to stand up and speak out for moms and dads who lost their children. And I want to remind everyone who may be concerned about me speaking up at the State of the Union that Joe Biden was 100% responsible for the deaths of the 13 brave service members we lost in Afghanistan. And last night, he took zero responsibility for it. So when Joe Biden started talking about flag draped coffins, I got fired up. My mind went straight to the 13 soldiers that died in Afghanistan. The mother, the mother of one of those heroes lives in my district. She told me Joe Biden killed her son. So you're darn right I spoke up. And if I could redo last night, I would absolutely do it again. The left, Laura, they got upset. They attacked me for it. That's fine, I can take it. But I will always speak the truth, mm. the truth about our southern border, the, the truth about corruption, the truth about bad Democrat policies, and the truth about Joe Biden funding Russia's war by buying their oil. And I am proud to have mentioned these 13 brave men and women because the media would have given Joe Biden a complete pass well, on ignoring them at the State of the Union. Yeah, not you, not, Laura. Yeah, <laughs> not, not we're, we're, we're talking. <laughs> yeah, not surprisingly, the White House decided to launch against you today. Watch. Right. A speech like the State of the Union, it's hugely important. It doesn't touch on, it doesn't have the time to touch on everything that is a priority during that heckling. That was the moment in the speech where the president was talking about his unity agenda. I think that says a lot more about them than it does about how important these priorities are. Uh, uh, the unity agenda, Congresswoman. I guess you stepped all over the unity of not mentioning Goodness. the sacrifice of those 13. Laura, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, they will not hold Biden accountable, so we the people have to. And Joe's spin doctor, Jen Psaki, said that he didn't have the time to get to everything. We would have sat there for three hours if he could have sustained for three hours. But sadly, Biden has never had time for these heroes. Remember when they returned home? Joe was checking his watch, and last night he spent more time giving small business owners bad economic advice than honoring those 13 heroes. Congresswoman, I started the angle tonight with a kind of an odd reference, but I, I saw that horrific story about that a, attacker in New York who smeared human feces on that woman, and he just, the judge released him. I guess he's being looked at for a hate crime now, but the judge said, we can't hold you today. And I thought, that kind of is the whole, that, that, that's just an image of today's Democrat Party, what they're doing to the American people. They're shoving it in our faces and then expecting a standing ovation at the end of it. So, oh, oh, go, go on to do it again. We'll release you to do it again to us. And I mean, it, it's kind of an intemperate way of comparing the two, but it's an insult to the American people right. to do what he did last night, try to pretend you're an America first, like populist and a uniter when they've been trashing America for the last 14 months as racist and, and misogynist and every other ist you can think of. Give me a break. 
That's right, Laura. And look, he knows the poll numbers. He plans to try and gaslight the public. He said that he would close the southern border. Give me a break. He's the one who opened it. I've talked to the Border Patrol agents that just want the policy to be able to do their job. He said that Democrats support the police, but it's his party who defunded and demonized them for the past two years. He said he'll be tough on Russia, uh, but he's the one who has empowered Russia by increasing our reliance on their energy. Energy. The American people are on to him, and uh, they know that his career he's a career politician, and they're not falling for his lies any longer. And we need to stop funding Putin's war and become energy independent here in America. Well, Congresswoman, I hope the GOP establishment is listening tonight. Thank you for joining us. And